In these clips, we see B-17 bombers flying in formation over the Reich in World War II. Well-defined vapor trails are seen forming downstream from each of the bombers' four engines. These are naturally occurring and not bombers dispensing nefarious chemicals. While poking around Reddit World War II aviation communities, these chemtrail posts came within my feed. They both indicated World War II Allied bombers were dispensing chemtrails on the Germans. The basis of their evidence are these images, which show vapor trails following behind B-17 bomber streams. This Reddit poster concluded, The Allies won the war by reducing the Axis soldiers' will and ability to fight by chemical means. Also, this is why bomber crews wore gas masks. The intent of this video is to review this conspiracy theory by describing the contrail environment, how they are developed, and the multiple reasons why vapor trails were detrimental to the bomber crews. A description of bomber form contrails is shown on this page from a declassified January 1945 Air Intelligence Weekly Summary document. I will expand the text for reading clarity. The word contrail is short for condensation trail, which is water-based. Chemtrail is short for chemical trail. The source of the most common type of contrail is from the bomber's engine exhaust. Burning the bomber's 100 octane gas produces water as a byproduct. B-17s are powered by four Wright Cyclone 1820 9-cylinder radial engines, each rated at 1,200 horsepower. The B-17 engine number 4 exhaust pipe is located here. The exhaust gases are at a high temperature and high pressure. The engine's turbocharging system is designed to capture this energy before discharging the exhaust gases into the atmosphere. At the tailpipe is a movable circular valve called the wastegate. At a high altitude, the pilot will close the wastegate, diverting the exhaust gases into this vane turbine straight down. The exhaust gases will spin the turbine at around 22,000 RPM. An internal impeller is connected to the turbine by a shaft. The impeller will compress the incoming outside low temperature air. The air was routed from this wing leading edge ram air inlet to the turbocharging impeller by internal ducting. A closer view of the supercharger air intake. Using this engine diagram from a 1944 B-17G field service manual as reference, we can follow the air feeding the engine from the supercharger intake, ducting to the turbocharger, intercooler, which acts like an air radiator, carburetor, where the 100 octane gasoline is added, shaft-driven supercharger, engine intake manifold, where it is distributed into the nine pistons. The high temperature, high pressure exhaust is routed to the turbocharger's turbine wheel. The wastegate valve is here. This turbo supercharged intercooled system is needed to maintain the engine's 1200 horsepower to ceiling altitudes up to 35,000 feet. So in these high altitude images, the engine exhaust is exiting the engine at the turbine wheel, not the engine's exhaust tailpipe. These condensation trail gases are forming aft along the path of each engine. Under normal flight conditions, 1.4 pounds of water is mixed into the exhaust for every pound of fuel burn. This relationship plus gas density equating to 6.1 pounds per gallon, water density 8.34 pounds per gallon, and each of the B-17's engine fuel flow rate is around 50 gallons per hour, yields each B-17's engine is releasing into the atmosphere one gallon of water every 70 seconds. This is around one-tenth the water flow rate of a garden hose. Under low temperature atmospheric conditions, the exhaust water vapor will condense into a visible vapor forming contrail. This page outlines typical bomber formation parameters for the year of 1944 from a 1945 8th Air Force tactical development document. A bomber is typically flying in a formation or combat box at an altitude of around 25,000 feet at a true airspeed of 230 miles per hour. The standard day outside air temperature at this altitude equates to minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 30 34 degrees centigrade. The formations are spaced every four miles. The air temperature and type of plane are factors which determine if exhaust contrails will form. P-38 Lightning exhaust contrails will usually form if the outside air temperature is at minus 38 to minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Contrails are both a nuisance and detrimental to safe bomber operations. The Germans use contrails for visual tracking and targeting of the bomber formations. The Germans adopted optical tracking sensors for vectoring their bomber interceptors and for targeting bombers with high caliber flak guns. This image shows part of the integrated air defense system from a May 1945 9th Air Force flak document. The formation is here. The planes are tracked by small Würzburg radar, then tracking is shifted to the optical stereoscopic rangefinder director, which sends a firing solution to the anti-aircraft flak guns. These are images of the firing director in action. The most accurate gun laying system 
system was this optical gun director. Contrails aid the Germans in optically tracking and targeting the formations. These puffs of smoke are the remains of a detonated flak projectile, no doubt track aided by the bomber's contrails. Exhaust contrails are either persistent or non-persistent depending on the atmosphere's relative humidity. Persistent contrails are usually present when cirrus clouds are at the same altitude. This is an example of a cirrus cloud. They form at high altitudes and are comprised entirely of ice crystals. Persistent contrails linger and limit the visibility of the following formations, like these bombers following the persistent contrails of the preceding bomber stream. This is a view from the B-17's bombardier station. Contrails can be used to mask an enemy fighter sneaking up on a bomber from the rear, like in this channel-drawn spot-on image. This image shows an example of a non-persistent contrail based on the diminishing length behind the bombers. This page from a 1997 Air Command Staff College report indicates contrails give away the position of formations to attacking fighters. Follow-on formations need to maneuver to avoid flying into the preceding formation's contrails. Three RAF B-17 losses were attributed to the inability to avoid contrails during the July 1941 Berlin Raid. Wingtip contrails are due to condensation forming at the tip's low-pressure zone. These types of contrails are rare and are usually less than 1,000 feet in length. They may occur at lower altitudes and higher temperatures than those from the plane's exhaust. Wingtip contrails are more likely to occur on airfoils with higher wing loading. The B-17 is known to have a low wing loading airfoil around 35% lower than the B-24. This image shows wingtip contrails from a modern commercial airliner. This type of condensation can also be observed at the propeller tips, like seen in this Douglas Skyraider image. This image shows a B-17 with three types of contrails all in one picture. The B-17's engine's water vapor is condensing here, forming long-lasting persistent contrails. The wingtip's non-persistent contrail is seen here, and the propeller tip's spiral contrail is here. There are plenty of images showing high-altitude bombers where the atmospheric conditions are such that no contrails form. The water in the engine's exhaust is not condensing. In this image, we see escort fighter Thunderbolts or Mustangs emitting contrails. The supercharged Mustangs have their engine's exhaust routed on each side of the fuselage. Their exhausts are close enough to the fuselage so the contrails appear as a single vapor stream. Bomber crewmen don't wear gas masks, they wear oxygen masks to maintain their life at high altitude flight, as seen in this 1943 War Department Technical Manual. This page from a 1945 8th Air Force Operations Mission Report indicates that during the March 23, 1945 mission, generally no contrails were reported, however, one light, non-persistent fighter contrail was observed at altitudes above 28,000 feet. In summary, contrails are a natural byproduct of the bomber's exhaust reacting with the environment. Engine exhaust contrails are long-lasting and have a detrimental effect on the mission by reducing crew visibility and increasing the bomber's formation visibility to attacking fighters or flak batteries. Non-persistent contrails are less likely but can be formed at the bomber's wingtips or propeller tips. I found no archival evidence to support the premise that World War II bombers were spraying chemicals over Reich-occupied Europe in World War II. The Reddit posters provided no evidence to support their claim. Certainly, chemical spraying shot down bombers would exist and the Germans would want the world to know. If you found this contrail review informative, please consider supporting the channel by commenting and or liking the video.